Hello everyone. This is our second lecture for Chapter 12, An Introduction to ANOVA. In our last video, we introduced ANOVA and explained the purpose and basic logic of ANOVA. In this lecture video, we will discuss ANOVA notations and formulas. Because ANOVA typically is used to examine data from more than two treatment conditions and more than two samples, we need a notational system to keep track of all the individual scores and totals. We will continue to use our hypothetical example from the last video about driving performance under three different phone conditions, no phone, a hands-free phone, and a handheld phone. So number one, the letter K is used to identify the number of treatment conditions, the number of levels of the factor or independent variable. For an independent sample study, K also specifies the number of separate samples. For our example, there are three conditions, so K is equal to three. Number two, the number of scores in each treatment is identified by a lowercase n. If the samples are of different sizes, you can identify a specific sample by using a subscript, like N1, N2, and so on. Three, the total number of scores in the entire study is specified by a capital letter N. When all the samples are the same size, N is constant, then N is equal to K times small n, or lowercase n. Four, the sum, of, the sum of the scores, sigma x, for each treatment condition or sample is identified by the capital letter T for treatment total. The total for a specific treatment can be identified by adding a subscript to the, to the capital T, T1, T2, and so on. Five, the sum of all the scores or observations in the study, the grand total, is identified by G. You can calculate G by adding up all N scores and by or by adding up the treatment totals, where G is equal to sigma capital T. Because ANOVA requires quite a few calculations and formulas, one common problem is simply keeping track of the different formulas and numbers. Let's talk about a general structure of the procedure before we introduce the individual formulas. So number one, the final calculation for ANOVA is the F ratio, which is composed of two variances. F is equal to variance between groups divided by variance within groups. Two, each of the two variances in the F ratio is calculated using the basic formula for sample variance. Sample variance, S squared, is equal to sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So we need to calculate a sum of squares, SS, and a degrees of freedom, DF, for the variance between groups, numerator of the F ratio, and we need another sum of squares, SS, and degrees of freedom, DF, for the variance within groups, denominator of the F ratio. To get these sum of squares and degrees of freedom values, we need to go through two separate analyses. First, calculate sum of squares for the total study and analyze it in two components between and within. Then calculate degrees of freedom for the total study and analyze it in two components, between and within. So the entire process of ANOVA requires nine calculations, three values for sum of squares, SS, three values of degrees of freedom, DF, two variances between and within, and a final F ratio. Let's begin with degrees of freedom calculations. These are quick and easy to do. 
First, we find the degrees of freedom for the total set of n scores. And then we partition this value into two components, degrees of freedom within groups and degrees of freedom between groups. Total degrees of freedom, so df capital T, is equal to n minus 1, so total number of scores minus 1. Within groups, degrees of freedom, df wg is equal to n minus k, the total number of scores minus the number of conditions or groups. And lastly, between groups degrees of freedom, df bg is equal to k minus 1, the total number of groups minus 1. Notice that df total is equal to df wg plus df bg. Next, we calculate total sum of squares and then partition this value into two components, sum of squares within groups and sum of squares between groups. Total sum of squares, SST, is equal to sigma x squared minus g squared divided by n. So sum of squared, sum of x squared minus grand total, div, grand total squared divided by total number of scores. Within group sum of squares, SSWG is equal to sigma SS. So the sum of each group's sum of squares. And lastly, between groups sum of squares can be found by subtracting sum of squares within groups from total sum of squares. SSBG is equal to SST minus SSWG. This is a much quicker way to calculate sum of squares between groups because sum of squares total is equal to sum of squares within group plus sum of squares between groups. The next step in the ANOVA procedure is to calculate the variance between groups and the variance within groups, which are used to calculate the F ratio. In ANOVA, we use the term mean squares, or simply MS, instead of sample variance, S squared. Mean square MS is equal to sample variance, S squared. So mean square for between group is equal to variance between groups, which is equal to sum of squares between groups divided by degrees of freedom between groups. <coughs> mean square, or MS within group, is equal to the variance within groups, which is equal to sum of squares within groups divided by degrees of freedom within groups. We now have a measure of variance or differences between groups and a measure of variance within groups. The F ratio simply compares these two variances. F is equal to variance between divided by variance within, which is equal to MS between groups divided by MS within groups. An ANOVA source table or summary tables are, are useful to organize the results of the analysis. The table here shows the source of variability between, within, and total variability, sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean squares, and F ratio. In ANOVA, the F ratio is constructed so that the numerator and denominator of the ratio are measuring exactly the same variance when the null hypothesis is true. In this situation, we expect the value of F to be around 1. If we get an F ratio that is greater than 1, then it is evidence that a treatment effect exists. The problem now is to define precisely which values are around 1 and which are greater than 1. To answer this, 
we need to look at the distribution of F ratios. Two characteristics to be aware of. Number one, F ratios are calculated from two variances, so F values are always positive numbers. Variance is always positive. Two, when null is true, the numerator and denominator of F ratio is measuring the same variance. So the ratio should be near one. In other words, the distribution of F ratios should pile up around one. F values are organized by two degrees of freedom. The numerator between groups shown in table columns and the, de the denominator within groups shown in table rows. Here's a graphical representation of what we just discussed about the F distribution. ANOVA hypothesis tests use the same four steps that have been used in earlier chapters. Calculations of the F test statistic is done in steps. One, calculate degrees of freedom, total, within, and between groups. Two, calculate sum of squares, total, within, and between groups. Three, calculate mean squares, between and within groups. Four, calculate the F statistic. I will provide a video that outlines an, hypothesis, an ANOVA hypothesis test. For ANOVA, the simplest and most direct way to measure effect size is to calculate the percentage of variance accounted for by the independent variable. Like the R-squared value used to measure effect size for t-tests, this percentage measures how much variability in the score is explained by the differences between groups. In ANOVA, effect size is called eta squared, or Greek letter eta squared, which is equal to sum of squares between groups divided by total sum of squares. In the next video, we will discuss post hoc comparison tests and ANOVA assumptions.